What am I going to say about you, Peter? Um, so Peter is, Peter Longofano is an animist, I would say. I decided this today. He's an animist in the least wooey, new agey, most interesting, best possible way. Um, he, he has a lively imagination, and he makes everything else alive um, with personality. I think that might be the Newport ad. I hope that's not the Newport cigarette ad. <laughs> no, it's alive with pleasure. Um, so everything has a personality. Um, and and it doesn't, anything, there's nothing too basic or elemental for him to not lavish his attention on and for him not to forge a relationship with, including um, words and pure sounds. So um, he's, I've known him for a while. He's one of the most playful wordsmiths I've ever met. Um, he has made up many words that I've remembered. He's taught me many words that I remember. Um, did you guys know what um, bedizen means? Does anyone know what bedizen means? It's a good word. Peter taught me. Um, is it bedizen or bedizen? Decorate. Yeah, to dress godly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She knows. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter taught me that word. Um, you guys should, should take little notes, some Peter Longafano vocabulary notes as he reads tonight. Um, he's going to be reading from chords where he is making characters out of sounds. It's his, his latest project. Um, and he takes every tone and he gives it a character and then he makes them interact and make battle and make love and um, argue, and then, and then that, and it's a wonderful thing to pull. And it's a chapbook, it's forthcoming from the operating system at the end of the month, um, and you should look, I wish I, I had a copy to hold up, but you should look for it, because it's coming out. Um, Peter Lanafana. Hey everybody. Hello. So that was that was a fantastic introduction. Thank you for that. And I think you set the tone pretty well. Uh, so uh, one just quick thing: uh, when I use numbers here, those are referring to the scalar elements, one, three, five, etc. I like numbers themselves, but it, that's that's what they mean here and now. So uh, yeah, let's. Let's begin with augmented seven. These quadruple adders, they wield their honorifics, a major film on jingoist advances in surge. All essaying the pictorial spread of the war chest and vying fraywise for primogenesis. They figure four, a fixed tetragrammaton, a cardinal oriented forward, a Frankish directive to forge on, spilling turf with color. Though she hasn't favored a corner with her countenance for millennia. Just the same, they act her aspects. Regiment one, and Venom's sabers nightly, religiously, each effulgence mustering in the coves of her mudras as she instructs her fold of poison makers. Regiment three, the rancid upright, permanently umbered in the archetypical mult multissimo skycast, who divides oncomers as hills do errant tufts of cloud. Regiment five, Bombardiers, ruin mongers, unyoking, payload after payload, where one gathers five hunts at a distance, a dissonance, hypersonic railguns on their good, good ships. And Regiment 7, the last, just the one night, parsimony, an opportunist 
a garnishment, effectively immortal since the concordat of Worms. His thumb pins the wrist. They're screwed. There's underlings. That was awesome. These guys are rad. <laughs> uh, I really dig this chord. This next one, I'll try to use it as often as I can. Half diminished seven. Good. That's tasty. Half diminished seven. Theater is tricky. Boars dig the calamity, the beer cocktails. But the leading players expire. Even seven, the ringmaster. A universal prohibitor, stoic, sounds mandatory. An interdictory circle, internationally observed. A slashed circle, don't take that tone. One, three, and five array at even intervals on why not the field play and repeat yourself out loud but also in front and behind and aside there they go hurt self-similar they nettle like they invented it each commemorating seven in isometric succession adorably panicked blotto bearing down teetotalers it's hard mode telling them apart. They titter, faithless and unstatuesque. Over they go, like unto wise old government. Timing's great, Jesus. Fully diminished seven. I love these. Fully diminished seven. <laughs> the state topples. Crumbs without cohesion. In a fan de siècle of shame and gutless tragle tub era. It's a 20th century, and complete symmetry blurs the foolhardy fundament. These peccadillos dribble, distilled anise, like the long hairs they are. An itinerant concern without any distinction with every convenience. A circus byline thithers, moinks, drenched with bruxus blue, like the gathered remote. They've names, sure, one, three, five, seven, shuttlecocks more alike, all alike. Khaki potatoes, clothed in isolates, like oilets. Invert them, subvert them, their enharmonic starch, stackable, modular. Small wonder they were numbered, easier to kill. Even so, dying in ignominy, even so wrenched from the Empyrean, these are characters baffled. Pity the tapestry with which these meddlesomes and mass magnetizers perform their disbandment. The obscene scroll work with which they discover their most recherche, that is, they return, man alive, to the greensward. They find themselves before us. Uh, this is a noir chord, minor major seven. Mingus, Charles Mingus, I love this chord. Seven grows philosophical, prone. Dominance bores him, his trussier, changed. Inspect his schwa, his delta. Now he gets a capital M, a Hitchcock raptus, cartwheeling him at billiards. Subsidized with primetime tension, naturally. Why else would you play him? Let's make this interesting. Phil was indulging an augmented triad on his knee on three. He inosculates her. She weaves back to the bar. Five and seven nested chipperly on her shoulders. She tends to lower herself to the situation. Bluesy. 
and he tends to himself, his own barkeep, desilvering the mirror with his stare. This bar sucks. That tension resurfaces. Minor, major. He's standing so close to one. Is he in the police? Has seven changed? The toss pot, he's up to his old tricks. He's down for whatever. Is, is the volume balance okay? Good. Minor six nine. One and three commiserate. Guess why? Time was they were the toast of their kid glove, pheasant stuffed milieu. Abruption tore in, nudged them closer. Glum reminiscers, all this cagey clan, toned down. Five and six married, never guessed. Another cluster, the hen pegged, the out argued. They share a jacket against imprecation. Nine sleeps alone, inconsolable. They're stable, if that's the word for an unsung stay in a stable. They're fair, if relegated to caravans. Hell, flip, flip six with nine. See if you can follow the changes. Go ahead, they'll catch as catch can. Malversationists. They don't fight, work, earn, trade, pray, or listen. The barbarians won, that's what you want to hear, that's why they hide. Such is the gypsy character, the gnaw, self-aimed, and fr fretting idly in Hungarian minor. Take Topsy from the top. Take Turvy. Major nine. Am I going too fast? <laughs> Alright, cool. Major nine. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <clears throat> Morning tide. Rainy light. Plug ugly. Through a woozy, shriveling arcade. Catapulted as the tapeworm, creeps one like a folded banknote. She must. Her take gains ground even as it dilutes. Hearty soup cut over much with water. Voicings crowd. One and three's grim sideshow has them hoisting to the boy. A shuffling shouldered, hyperextended concern. Seven, the load bearer. Clearly fled, smitten or schismed or some such. Vanity, that cluster of polyps, grew exaggerated in his brain forest. Listen, are you queasy? Well, yeah, here's where five betook her starvation, the first to succumb in this fivesome privation. From the floor, she molds nine's thermospheric mug a compound bombast in the next octave. Correct or not, five to the last in Punic rack would not feed. Now take nine. Much like hunger, he pines for relief, to be overpopulation, to spread. And it's for damn sure he'll never retract. Compare five, immeasurably wiser, for slipping this mortal wallet. Ask for her in a vamp, in a comp. She's relieved to be absent. That's good. I feel like I'm in the way, jeez. Uh, yeah. Dominant seven, sharp nine. Got some net. The Hendrix chord. Don't it's in trouble. What else but a disc of hammered tin? A chintz spotlight on three. She who is pleased to disgust us. Who is also winsome, but little, like smallpox. Three is many at once. 
Though she hurts to harbor, she's so convincing in withholding satisfaction that we feel ourselves her tormentors. A doppelganger, a difficult to interpret squirm, nevish sad. If I still playing dead or hellicule, hard in this glance backwards, light not to turn around, to insubordinate. Hold on to one if you can. That's funk at the end of the day. A hand fist that hold up, wherein seven clamps her noble woman's windpipe for ransom against nine's millipedestrianism. Boss fight. A hand quick's confabulation. Utterly lewd. Unthinkable enragement. Blotching fuchsia. Be hither the pipsqueak veil. Nine's none other than three threes. What chance does one have? You can keep going. <laughs> Altered seven. Change it up. Do all the altars. Yeah. Altered dominant seventh. Seven loops pinkies in the fluted hooks of his balcony. Lupercalia, California, two weeks in February. A non so much, by fume topiary, a rumor of it inflicts his scaffolding. Is Cappadocia so far off? Suspended in cochlear fluid, does he, the salamander, feel the seismographic affront? Lithe lizardly five, supernaturally grafted in the sigmoid confines of Seven's inner ear. And nine, native Philadelphian, geist cycling like a hailstone nucleus from high to low mass, articulating shingles in this storm-prone hamlet. Cruz Gok, Great Scott, Valentinius had soul, and Valor, observe Valerian's anxiolytic agency, his knuckly, spavined claws, long absent the finesse to wield a saucepan, held petrification off in time to snap these reptilian spines, to cure the jailer's purblind daughter. Witness 13, Starting from a scoliosic sleep, miraculously flat. Listen, listen. B7 again, brought up from your first ever peak, from the peak of the State House Rotunda. What will it take you to keep you from leaping, you leapling, to illustrate, as tritones do, the mortal difference just three steps makes? How else would your fell deeds redound, if not paltrily, plausibly? This is my favorite chord, not my favorite poem, I like, love them all, but dominant 13, let's get that, filthy. <laughs> it's, like, it's magic, dominant 13. Crimes compel. On this put upon hardscape, in scantness they lengthen, that we might disrobe from want as three craves, knit jawed in one's train. Let it be listenable. A subcategory subsists. An emerp, a prime whose digits reverse to another one. Thirteen's the first. Cutting the threes quick with the myth of 31. C3 drunk and covetous, yet gingerly seated at Seneca. What, imagining tough guys dying before the rest, led in lust? One says to three, let us two obtain the great worm's years. Three, I am hatched. Seven, both you bloodworts hush. Five doesn't say anything. 
Six strides in, striking seven immediately dumb. If his rule is draconian, it reminds the strike broken not to overfeed, to decline as fishmongers do, their own basketfuls, and with agape approach the common cup. He may be too late, for though he's fervent, one and three are now thoroughly snelled on winged Bahamut ascendant, a numerological. To his credit, 13, six returns, or devotionally, St. Anthony, patron of recovering the loss. 13 doesn't shrink, but neither does he scale. For he's most unlike the squamous divers and crawlers of the earth, even as he swims with vision, even as he takes the measure of twining scales, as these twin Aurelians flex his gullet wide to pour in the order of Lepidoptera. His glow outlumens nearly any other, abyssal or cerulean. This will be the last one. Thanks so much for having me. Really looking forward to Camille. Really looking forward to Yusuf. It's an honor. Major 13. truth be told. She perceives three and five, her juniors, circling her like wolves for wastewater. And seven, pretender no more, their fauntleroy in clutch intransigence to whom they administrate as they do debt. Nine parts the castrum dolores Velvet Pathfinder. Probity gleams within, autoclaving. One sees him as a hurtling boy. Terrible deer to cathecting as depression wear does. This terminal dawn hinge. Fool Eleven draws near, as the occluded moon wharves don't. Arch decades of contortion having failed to undo her intrinsic clumsy girl four who can't sing. Finally 13, Scott's baronial, popular as pogrom, the self-same, her son, her walled in a friary six, her balding toddler. Be at peace, sisters and brothers. One goes earthward, like the fountain's issue. Not one of you psychopomps has her minutest semblance. Your cats and your incapacity to resist her twitching. Be at peace. Nothing despicable practices on her any longer. No telescope was ever devised I could reconcile the fantastic. You too, listener, find peace with the fact that after 13 has hung up his pallbearer's shroud and huffed alone his way to the crown of the bluff after he has installed his slight frame at his post in the cylindrical bartisan's turret and undone the plated drawstrings between himself in the interior of his goatskin rucksack. Then, in the after hour of one's death, will the enormity of this unreal telescope transpire. We leave him to his grief. Thank you.